greatest artists like Michelangelo started his career as a forger. Vincent van Gogh copied 21 paintings of his favourite artist. So we all start somewhere, we all kind of take that inspiration and our very very first step is to copy it. And what we're doing in copying it is learning. We're learning what goes into that particular creation. I've been working on this painting from the Lucky Sixpence and Toby Lowe photography. I saw it in Instagram and I absolutely fell in love with how deep the colours were, how rich the colours were, and just beauty and composition of the photograph. What I wanted to do is take that photograph, translate it into a painting, and use it to improve my oil skills. The really important thing I did here was talk to the Lucky Sixpence and ask if I could use the photograph as a reference for my painting. And luckily they said they'd love to see how it turns out. If I'd have done this without asking their permission, that would have crossed a line, an etiquette line in almost like an unspoken rule of being an artist, being a creator. It's disrespectful to use somebody else's work and pass it off as your own, but certainly upset that original creator. If you actually seek permission, there's something wonderful that happens in that collaboration of working together as well. I'm working very closely from the photograph to the painting at the moment, but I want to take it that next step further. I want to use this as my inspiration start point, but I then want to put my own spin on it, my own creativity on it, to take it to a different level. Art is a little bit like music, where when you're learning the different techniques and methods and skills and processes, it's really important to copy so you can understand how, it's all, how it all goes together. So say you're learning the piano, you would listen to some music and you would copy and it would give you like a benchmark to know that you're doing the right thing, you're on the right track. And it's the same with painting, you have, you have a reference, a benchmark on which you can say, yep that's right, no that's wrong, or how do I need to re-describe this so it's closer to the reference image. But if you just stop at the point of it looking like the reference, what you've done is you've made a copy and you've learnt along the way, but then you've missed the opportunity if you don't take it that next step further. So far in my professional art experience, I've had companies in China and America who've just directly copied my work from the internet and then printed it onto merchandise and sold it as, as their own, not giving any reference to me um, and certainly not asking my permission in the first place. So this then goes from being copied to being stolen. It's no fun having your work stolen. If you steal work, you can actually get into some serious legal trouble. It's a legal infringement on that artist's copyright and their rights as a creator. My art is protected in lots of different ways. I have automatic copyright as an artist, I'm a member of the Fine Art Trade Guild to give legal advice, and I swiftly act upon any infringements of my own artworks. I've also had instances where people have been to a workshop and then started to sell the same style and format of cows and teach the same workshop. And again, that brings into play my rights as a creator and I will challenge those. And you should too if it happens to you and your artwork. I'm not trying to shame or embarrass anybody who may have done this. In fact, I did this when I started and it was before I knew the etiquette of being an artist and how to respectfully ask for permission and how to take a copy from an active study to something that is my own work. My advice to you is to diversify your inspiration. So don't just take it from one creator, one artist. Take it from several different sources. Create, certainly, from reference photos. So you need to develop your own voice before you can claim originality. I can't claim originality on this piece of work just here. This is a direct copy and it's an active study because I'm learning what has gone into the process. If you're really inspired by somebody, my advice would be to combine styles. Take a little bit from them and a little bit from somebody else and a different subject matter and a different way of doing it and put it into a melting pot, your melting pot, to make it your own. So, just to recap, there's being inspired and there's copying. 
Copying is great for learning. Use it for learning, study the process, study the stages, and understand what works for you. Break down all of the elements in that learning study. That when I say elements, I mean what materials were used, colors, subject, medium. So that's copying. Copying is good for learning. Being inspired to create something and then commercially sell it you need to create something with your own style. So you can start by copying because you've been learning, but then how do you bridge the gap from copying to creating something that is originally yours? And that is a process in itself. So for example, this piece won't just be a direct copy of this photograph. That would be useful as a learning experience and I've made tons of notes of what has gone into this painting so far, but I know I will take this several steps further and make something of my own. And that's where I step into originality. The key then is to create something wholly original. So not using that image at all, but using everything I've learned in that process from the direct copy to creating something new and taking it that next step further to then starting again and creating something that's been inspired by that process, by that experience. I'll put some useful links below, just in case you're at the stage where you need to protect your artwork a little bit more. Oh, and I just wanna say thank you to everybody who's my eyes and ears out there because everybody who supports Cow Art, they let me know when horrible situations like this happen. And without that army of eyes and ears, I wouldn't be able to keep tabs on it all. So thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it.